Find the quickest road to checkmate. Let's start with our checks. The first is rook e5 check, king f6. We'll play the bishop to h5, king to g7. When we move in with our king, let's assume he'll come back to f6. We can force him right back to the g7 square if we play rook e8. We can advance our king, king h7, king to f6, king h6, and then there's your checkmate. How many moves is that? One, king f6, two, king g7, three, king f6, four, king g7, five, king h7, six, king h6, seven. Okay, so that's checkmate in seven. Let's consider bishop to f6. Let's assume he goes for the center with king f6. If I advance my pawn to defend my bishop so I can move my rook, and he plays king e7, then I'll bring my king up behind and suppose king d6, assuming he'll make for the center. Well, then rook c4 forces the king back to e7. That allows my king to come over to e5. And then on king f8, my pawn can come to f6. I've got bishop and pawn adjacent and controlling everything here. And of course, the bishop controls here and then checkmate. How many moves is that? So one, king f6, two, king e7, three, king d6, four, king e7, five, king f8, six, king e8, seven, checkmate. So neither of those can be the answer because they're both checkmate in seven. There must be a mate in six or better available. Instead, let's start with bishop here because that leaves the king only one legal move. And then king g4 once again leaves him with only one legal move. Okay, let's just close the net. He has four legal moves, but we can guess he'll choose king h7 because any move to the eight is going to allow my king to come to h6, followed by checkmate. Yeah, this is the line we're going to follow. He'll come to here, but then we'll force him to the eight and then play king h6. So that is our move. He only has one legal move here, only one legal move here. Four legal moves here, but one of them leads to a faster checkmate. So we're assuming king h7. Yes, force him to the eight. And now... Checkmate. Oh, yeah.